the Bible reads, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye have, these ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Ye blind guides which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. I think that's what we do sometimes, is we strain at a gnat and swallow a camel with our doctrines, with our lifestyles, uh, with many things in the Christian walk. Amen. What I want to focus on here is the weightier matters of the law. I'm just going to deal with the first today, judgment. One of the weightier matters of the law. We see there are three. Judgment, mercy, and faith. Now, not that I didn't believe the Lord, but I decided to check in the, to the law and see actually, in fact, what is weightier. And you notice if you go and you just do a simple word search for judgment, mercy, and faith, you'll find 294 uh, times judgment is mentioned. Uh, 276, mercy, and 247 is faith. And then the immediate context of what the men were talking about here was, was the tithe, right? They, they tithe of mint and anise. In other words, they bring home their groceries and they're even going to tithe of their spices. And in the entirety of the scriptures, 38 times tithe or tithes or tithe, you know, variations of it is mentioned. You see very quickly when you have almost 300 of these other topics mentioned and 300 different times and then 38 is how much the tithes. We can see what God actually finds important. The weightier matters. Let's deal with the first. Judgment. First Kings chapter 20, the Bible says in verse 40, And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be. Thyself hast decided it. So there's a very simple explanation of what the word judgment means. Judgment, thyself hast decided it. In other words, Deciding. It's a decision. It's a judgment. We make judgments each and every day. People that say judge not are just crazy. Because every time you come to a red light, you're judging whether you're going to stop or whether you're going to go. The yellow lights are the worst, right? I know most of us kind of hit the gas instead, right? But, but the reality is you have to make that judgment call as to what you're going to do each and every day. Judgment is not only a weightier matter of the law, it's actually a weightier matter of our everyday life. Turn with me if you would, Genesis chapter 18. Genesis <coughs> chapter 18. Genesis 18, verse 17. Genesis 18, verse 17. The Bible reads, And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. So we see very quickly, uh, when judgment is first mentioned in the context of, of a man, that to do justice and judgment is actually a great virtue for this man, for Abraham in particular. God was going to reveal to Abraham his, his intended purpose for Sodom and Gomorrah. He was going to reveal unto him what he should do. And as he has that great conversation in heaven amongst himself, right? he decides that, shall I withhold that thing from... Abraham that I'm going to do. Well, why would I do such a thing? He's going to be a great man. And, and why is he going to be a great man? Well, because he's going to keep the way of the Lord. Well, what's the way of the Lord? He's going to do justice and judgment. In other words, Abraham's going to make the right decisions. He's going to judge between right and wrong. He's going to judge between good and evil. He's going to make the right decisions in doing justice and in doing judgment. Exodus chapter 23. Exodus 23, the Bible reads... Beginning in verse 1. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. If thou see the ass of him that hateth thee lying under his burden, and wouldest forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with him. Thou shalt not rest to the judgment of the poor in his cause, keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and the righteous slay thou not. 
for I will not justify the wicked. What God's talking about here is, is not resting judgment. In other words, taking what is right and twisting it to your own purposes, to your own devices. He equates resting judgment with the false report, with the wicked who would perform an unrighteous witness, who would falsely accuse somebody, who would falsely speak of somebody. And the people that do this tend to be those that are, are following after a multitude, right? Too often, Christians find themselves caught up in following after a multitude to do evil. Thou shalt not rest, thou shalt not decline after many to rest judgment. And that's what happens quite often when you follow after the many. You have to rest, you have to twist the judgments of God, you have to make excuses for, you have to compromise essentially in order to decline after the many, in other words, to lead them in that downward spiral, in that downward slope you got to compromise. you got to rest the judgments of God. you got to twist what you know is right and do what is wrong in order to follow after those multitudes. He talks about this in regard to, to, uh, to having respect of persons. Not having respect of persons means to see the poor in their cause and help them. Not to, again, rest the judgment of the poor. Not to look at the poor in his cause and, and, and see that as somehow a different case than that if you were to look at the rich man in his cause. Christians aren't to do so. Leviticus chapter 19, the Bible says. Leviticus 19. Leviticus 19. In verse 15, the Bible says, Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Unrighteous, being unrighteous in judgment means to look at a situation and then base your judgment, base your decision, base your course of action upon the person and, and their persons in particular. So based on their status, whether they're rich or whether they're poor, you're doing unrighteousness in judgment when you do that. When you perform your view, when you perform your opinion about a situation based on that, you're actually doing unrighteousness in judgment. You're resting the right and good way. Next thing you see is down in verse 35. So we're not to rest judgment when dealing with persons. In verse 35 it says, You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment in meteor, in weight, or in measure. Just balances and just weights and a just epoch and a just hind shall you have. In other words, you, when you're dealing with business fairs, when you're dealing with people out in the workforce, you are not to make your judgments based on an unbalanced weight. In other words, swaying the decision, swaying the benefit to your own selves. I think I just experienced it this week. I, I was, I was uh, coming down here in order to, to get this place and to seal it down. And, uh, and you know, you, you can go and you can mix and mingle and haggle and try to talk people down, try to get more for what you want. But I, I find that when you do that, um, you get caught into this, uh, this trap of sorts. Um, yeah, it is good to get a good deal, but I believe that God will set that up. And if you, if you take a little bit of a, of a hit on something, perhaps God will bless you in the end. Not, not that we should just go out and always be getting ripped off. That's not wise. That's not right judgment. But if you don't like the price of something, just, just say, hey, that's fine. I'm going to go look somewhere else, right? I don't think Christians ought to be caught up in haggling. That which is sold in, the, in, in, in shambles, right? Just, just pay, asking nothing for conscience sake. It, it, it is kind of the, the at, outlook that I have in regard to this. Um, why? Because when we get back and forth in regards to money, and we're trying to, we're trying to get five bucks back here, five bucks back there, I just find it unbecoming of, of Christian behavior. And maybe that's just me. Maybe I can't, I can't point to a Bible verse other than this, just having, having a just measure and a, and a just ephah and a just weight in a, in a meat yard, and you're like, what in the world is a meat yard? Right? This can't apply to us. But I'm just thinking in, in Christians, I, I just think it's not good for us to haggle back and forth. It's not good for us to try to always get a better deal on something. If you, if you don't want to pay it, just don't, just don't pay it. Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10. What am I talking about today? I'm talking about judgment. I'm talking about one of the weightier matters of the law. And there are literally, like I said, hundreds and hundreds of these different points, different statutes, different judgments in regard to Christians that we can apply to ourselves. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 10 
Beginning in verse 17, the Bible says, For the Lord God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doth execute judgment of the fatherless and the widow, and loveth the stranger, and giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the strangers, for you are strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. He is thy praise, he is thy God, that hath done for thee these great and terrible things, which thine eyes have seen. And that's, that's just our God. He's the one that's going to do right judgment. I think we ought, to, we ought to do our best to follow after him, follow in his steps. And just in this verse alone, you see just how great God is. He is thy praise. He is thy God. He hath done these great and terrible things. And that leads back to my last point that, that you know, if it's, if it's just a matter of haggling to save five bucks, well, when you have the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the, you know, in your corner, when you have him to be your praise, when you have him doing great and terrible things, it's not like his, his bank account is being diminished by, by those, those few cents, few dollars that we're haggling down to people. Now, just, just as a Christian, I believe, just, just pay. Just, just take the right judgment that God puts before us and uh, do right by him. So judgment, we're talking about. This is the way to your matter. Now, some people, again, will say, hey, judge not. But we have a whole book dedicated to judges, right? This was the economy of the Old Testament that they would bring before these men laid up as judges who were often in the gates, and their responsibility was simply to righteously judge between matters, hear cases, hear arguments, hear disputes, and judge according to the law and according to their wisdom and according to the wisdom that God imparted unto them. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 16. Deuteronomy 16 in verse 19, the Bible says, Thou shalt not rest judgment. There it is again. Twisting judgment. In other, words, in other words, changing what is right judgment and twisting it, resting it, right? Thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift. For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wicked and pervert the words of the righteous. In 17, chapter 17, the Bible reads in verse 8, If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment... Between blood and blood, between plea and plea, and between stroke and stroke, being matters of controversy within thy gates, then shalt thou arise and get thee up into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt come unto the priests, the Levites, and unto the judges that shall be in those days and inquire, and they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. And thou shalt do nothing to the sentence, right? Don't rest it, just don't do anything to it. Which they of that place, which the Lord shall choose, shall show thee. And thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee, according to the sentence of the law, which they shall teach thee, according to the judgment, which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence, which they shall show thee, to the right hand, to the left. How many different ways can God tell you? When you go to the judgment, when you go to the man with the righteous judgment. When you go to in our in our day, we can talk about you know if you have a pastor that you tr that you trust, if you have an elder that you trust. Some people often will go to their their fathers. Some people can go to an elder, just elder Christian. Go to them seeking judgment. If the judgment is good, if the judgment is just, if it's the right weight, if it's the right measure, if it seems like it lines up with scriptures, because ultimately that's our final judge. Don't rest it. Just stick to what the judgment is. Don't decline from the right hand or to the left. Don't uh, waver from it. Don't rest it. Accept the judgment. And I think we got to do the same thing even when we're reading through the scriptures. Do what they tell you. And this is a front to so many people in the world right now to just be told what to do. But that's what the Bible is full of. That's what God is full of. He, he sends preachers, yes, but he also sends his word, and we can behold it. And it's there to simply lay out the judgment, and it is our responsibility to do what the judgment says. Our judgment in regards to the judgments contained in the scriptures should always be yea. We should always say, yea, God, you're right. God, you're good. God, you have judged righteously, and I agree with that 100%. I'm not declining to the left hand or to the right. I'm going to do what the judgment of God says. Uh, look in chapter 25. Look over in chapter 25. Anyone who says that judges shouldn't exist, that there shouldn't be judges, that we should just 
do according to our own ways and according to our own works. Look at uh, Deuteronomy 25, and verse 1. If there be a controversy between men, and they come unto judgment, that the judges may judge them, then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. And that's what is right in judgment, is when you justify the righteous and you condemn the wicked. In all cases where there is, where there is, is men in dispute, the righteous should be justified, the wicked should be condemned. But look at this, the judges may judge. That's their whole point, that's their whole purpose. Judges are set forth to do that. And I believe Christians ought to have good judgment. How do we have good judgment? Well, it's contained within the scriptures. We gotta know our Bibles. Psalm chapter 37, Psalm 37. <clears throat> the Bible says in Psalm 37, beginning in verse 5, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to, to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as a new day. And that's what I mean. Christians as judges of this world ought to be able to judge. Well, how would we do that? Because God shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and he shall bring forth thy judgment as the new day. In the same way, that light shines forth from Christians. Why? Because we're given good judgment by the statutes of the Lord God. In verse 28 it says, For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. In verse 30, the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. Christians, you're to judge people today. You're not to judge them self-righteously. You're not to judge them puffed up, but you're to judge righteous judgment. And we'll get there. Psalm 119, verse 66, teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. And that's how Christians are empowered with righteous judgment. If you're having difficulty making good decisions in your workforce, if you're having difficulty making good decisions in your life, it's because you're lacking good judgment. Pray this to God. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed in thy commandments. If you believe in his commandments, there's no reason why you wouldn't judge according to his commandments. You've believed them. You've loved them. You've embraced them. They become a part of you. God teaches those to you in order that you would judge righteously. They're still going to say, they're still going to say, judge not. Judge not is that cry. Doesn't the Bible say judge not? Didn't Jesus say judge not? He did. Matthew 7. Jesus Christ commanded us, judge not. Judge not. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured unto you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? But considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye? And behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote of thy brother's eye. Judge not, yes, hypocritically. Judge not when you've got beams in your eye. Judge not when you are doing unrighteousness, when you don't love God's commandments, when you don't love God by doing his commandments. Yeah, judge not. Best to keep your mouth shut because how often, especially in the early days of being a Christian, did I apply judgment to people? And man, did they spin around very fast. Well, you do this and you do that and you do this. When you're a baby Christian, right, you haven't grown in grace. You haven't grown to love the commandments. You don't know all the commandments. Man, when I got saved, there were so many things that were sins that I had no idea were sins, right? We need to grow unto those things. We need to learn those things. And when we learn those things and gradually, by the grace of God, allow those beams to be plucked out of our eyes, we can then see clearly and judge righteous judgment. And in that way, we can, with that judgment, judge. And we don't have to worry about that same judgment being put back upon us. Judge not, right? Judge not. John chapter 7. Judge not. The world's crying that all the time. Judge not. You're judging me. Don't judge me. John chapter 7. The Bible says in verse 24. John 7 verse 24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. We can easily look at situations. We can easily look at people and we can just judge according to what we see. But if we are to judge righteously, we are to actually know the scriptures, know the Bible, and that's the only way that we can actually judge righteous judgment. 
we get caught up in these in these things and we and we look at ourselves as having you know the the first situation the hypocritical judgment that's the baby christian but this one is the danger for the uh, the grown christian you know i have my suit i have my tie i'm there three days a week at church i'm going soul winning I'm, I'm raising my family i don't smoke i don't chew i don't run with people that do and now i'm looking at the man saved or not who, who's smoking who's drinking who's cussing and i am going to apply judgment to him when the only thing that I'm judging him is according to the appearance. Man, there's so much more to the Christian life. There's so much more to the depths of people. There are a lot of really nice, really decent, really good people that drink alcohol. There are a lot of really nice, really decent, really good people that, that smoke cigarettes, right? But if we just, because we don't do that, we think it's now our prerogative to just judge, just attack according to the things, right? I'm saying those things aren't right, but because I don't do them, now I'm applying judgment. I don't believe that to be righteous judgment. It becomes my opinion. It becomes my, my feelings about things, if this makes sense at all. But if I go to a scripture and I say, hey, your body's the temple of God, right? Now I'm applying a scripture, a righteous judgment to the situation. And I'm saying, hey, I was there. I, I used to drink. I used to smoke. I used to do all of these things. And instead of attacking that person, because, well, you should be better than that. You shouldn't do those things. Now I'm saying, hey, look, you know, I, I used to do those things, but let's just look at what the Bible says. And now I'm presenting a righteous judgment. I'm not presenting the appearance. I'm not presenting what's on the outward to them. I'm saying, hey, the scriptures say, hey, you shouldn't, you shouldn't fornicate. You shouldn't lie. You shouldn't steal. You shouldn't drink. You shouldn't do these things. <laughs> and were it not for the grace of God, I would do these things. But I just want to share with you what the Bible says. I think that's what it means when it says to judge righteous judgment. We're not just attacking everybody based on what they are or are not doing because that just puffs us up more. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel like I'm so much better than these people because I'm not doing or I am doing and they're not doing or they are doing. But when I come to them with scriptures and humility, I'm admitting, hey, this is not what Josh says. This is what the Bible says. This is the righteous judgment. And I want you to apply this to your life. I want you to be corrected by it. I want you to be judged by it. Not so that I would get any benefit, but that you would be closer to the will of God and what he wants for your life. Amen. So that's the first, that's the first of these, uh, these, these greater uh, things um, you know, from Matthew chapter 23. These weightier matters of the law. Judgment. Next we'll deal with mercy and faith, but that'll be for another time. Thank you, God, for this day. I thank you for the righteous judgments.